Hello everyone! Welcome back to the channel. For those new here, I'm Claudia. It is the month of February. Es febrero! El mes de amor. It's February, the month of love. So I have come to share some thoughts with you about self-love and how it can lead to an easy love. Why? Sometimes girl talks need to be had in relationship to love and self-love before you can, can adequately love someone else. You've got to have self-love before you can realize what type of love is coming to you, be it not the best of love, or be it lust, or not even love, what type of emotion is coming at you, you've got to be able to recognize that emotion. You've got to be able to recognize when what someone else is feeling towards you is not the love that you want. Now I know every month ought to be a month of love, and it is but you know how it is. We advertise February as Valentine's Day and all that comes with it in the way of roses, hearts, and love. Who wants to be alone on, quote, Valentine's Day? But if you have self-love, you can be alone at any point. And you can open yourself to genuine love and affection from others. So let's get started. Self-love should come first. Why do I say that? Because with self-love, you can walk towards an easy love. And when I think about an easy love, I think about a love that you don't have to manufacture all sorts of moves or game playing or verbalizing something that's not true to have someone else's love or to have someone else's uh, interest and desires to be turned towards you. If you've got to work on those things to get someone's attention, you're not doing it the right way. Stop it because you're going towards a lesson that is going to be difficult to pay in the end. The price for that lesson is going to be very high. And you, if you can learn from someone else be smart and learn from someone else. It is essential to save you time and heartbreak. When you don't love yourself and you're trying to play in the game of love, you're walking towards self-abnegation. You're putting yourself on the very, very, very back of the bus, the tram, and you're putting someone else ahead of you in not a good sense, but a sense that says, you're worthy, I want you, I know you don't want me, but if I do these things, you, can, you might be able to see how lovable I am. No. If the person doesn't see how lovable you are because you are lovable, believe me, you could spend a lifetime with that person and they will not love you. At least, not the way you want to be loved. Never force someone to be with you just because you want that person. You will pay a price for doing that. You don't force anything when it comes to love. Why should you? Love can be easy. It can flow naturally. The attraction is there. The love grows every time you see that special person. Whenever you have to break someone's arm for that person to see you, you are doing something wrong. And that something wrong is looking at a person who is not looking at you. You can't be looking at that person in the heart. Look me in the heart, says Tina Turner. You can't, baby, because you're not even looking yourself in the heart to see that that person is not trying to see you. When I think about self-love synonymous with an easy love, I think about a poet that I love here in Atlanta and her name is Red Summer. 
She has a poem, I know, that says, I want an easy love. And then she goes on to poetically, beautifully illustrate what that easy love looks like. I thought I had that poem in her book, Raw Sugar. I, it wasn't in here. So I ha I've heard her deliver that at poetry venues in Atlanta. But nonetheless, even though I didn't find an easy love in Raw Sugar, I found three poems that I'm going to share with you by Red Summer at the end of this video. Everything comes with a price, my loves. Everything. Even if the price is something you want to pay. But let me tell you, when you make that erroneous decision, when you make that thoughtless decision to pursue someone who isn't trying to love you back, you pay a price that you do not need to pay. You pay a price that you could have sidestepped. If a person doesn't come for you like they really want you, like he or she really wants you, <laughs> you gotta open your eyes, sweetie. You gotta open your eyes, love, and look at some things straight on. If she doesn't come for you like you are a prize, you better run. If he tells you, you don't need a piece of paper to be with me, we can be together without the law saying this piece of paper, this marriage contract should be signed by both of us and the judge and we are married. You need to leave because that person is really saying something very important that you're not listening to and that is I don't want to be in a relationship with you. I don't want to be married to you. You will pay. If you force somebody to the judge's chambers to get married or down the aisle, you will pay. Maya Angelou told you best. When a person tells you who he is, believe him. I want you to think about this. The years that you spend, or the months, days, or weeks that you spend with an abusive lover, with an abusive person, I should say, could have been solitary with you, knowing you, trying to find out what you really want, so that you can then spend hours, minutes, hours, days, weeks, months, and years with a healthy, loving, unconditionally beautiful relationship with someone or someones who really want you. That is the aim of the game. Give yourself the price of admission that's beautiful. Give yourself a healthy love. Know what a healthy love looks like. If you don't know what it looks like, read some books about healthy love. Look at some healthy, loving movies. Look at what can happen if you don't have it right there in your face, in your family. Look for relationships. Be observant. Look for relationships that are wholesome, sweet. Love doesn't have to hurt. It does not have to be painful and excruciating like you're trying to cut something out of your body. Be able to walk away. Don't tell yourself, I can't leave this person. I love this person. I just can't. You can. Change the story. Change the script. Be aware of the signs of abuse. And when, they're, when they begin to clearly appear on your wall, be able to read them. When someone you desire tells you not to disagree with him or her in public. You better make some tracks, baby. You better be opening the door because if you don't, you will be in for it.
if a person doesn't value your opinions, you better leave. If a person tells you what to wear and what not to wear, you better say adios. And you might not even want to say adios. You might just want to leave, period. Just find a way to find the, if you can't find the back door, find the front door. But you better leave. If a person tells you you cannot go somewhere, and then that person goes everywhere he or she is big enough to go. Now you know what you should be doing. <laughs> you should be on the steps moving towards your car, an Uber, a Lyft, a bus, your feet. Find a way to hit the streets. Because that person is saying, you are not worth anything to me. You're not valuable to me. I don't have it like that for you. I'm not trying to give you anything. I'm trying to drain you and take, take, take. But that's not the language of love. If your love language does not match that person's, you better leave. If that person is always telling you how awful you are and how you never pay attention to them because you're so awful and you always care about yourself, you got it. You better be making tracks. Love is a give and take. Sometimes you give a little bit more. Sometimes you take a little bit more. But you always feel loved. Learn to read the writing on the wall. And if you have a hard time reading that writing, get someone you respect and you honor. Get someone to help you decode the language of abuse. Because that dance of abuse is also a price you don't want to pay. So after a love that you're not trying to keep and you realize this is not it, don't close your heart. I had a, a, a date to tell me once, Claudia, your heart is closed. Your heart chakra needs opening. I knew she was right. I knew it but I did not know how to hurdle all of the abuse that I had received. I didn't understand. I wasn't walking towards forgiveness first for everything. And then open your heart to love. Once you feel that forgiveness, you can let the stories go. The stories of abuse that you wanna keep telling again and again and again. You just, in forgiveness, say, I forgive that. I forgive that person. And once you let go and you forgive, you can see the sun on the horizon again. And you can open to being loved and loving. Because we're here to love and be loved in return, no matter why you think we are here. That's what I believe, at least. Because what is life without love? Love is all there is. But we just get love sometimes going the wrong, wrong way. Going towards abuse and not towards a genuine togetherness. A mutual understanding and unconditional easy love. Just be present for the gifts of love when they show up. I hope this brief Girl Chat was uh, beneficial to you. I know it's beneficial to me. And um, because if you're holding those type of stories from your past, it puts a glaze over your eyes and you cannot, I don't think adequately see people, genuine people who want to know you. And so I knew when this person told me your heart chakra is closed. I knew she was right, but I had never heard it put like that before and definitely not in my face. The first poem from Raw Sugar by Red Summer is my advice in times like these. Uh, and I chose this poem because sometimes we're down. 
sometimes I'm down. And since we're talking about self-love, we, we've got to know how to get back up when we're feeling down. Even if someone we thought we wanted a relationship with walks away, and we don't have to walk away, we're down. And this poem touched me as all of Red Summer's poetry, but I'm going to share my advice in times like these. Laugh often, <laughs> laugh often and often without reason. Never let fear of being the only one laughing stop you from laughing. Laugh harder till others laugh at your laughter, at the pitch and tone of your unbridled joy at the possibility of such laughter existing amongst such adversity, at the profundity of the laugh itself, and the use of the word profundity to describe it. Laugh till poets use it as a simile, because we love comparing things like Laughter to other things. Laughter is like or not as like. Laugh till poets use it as a simile because we love comparing things like laughter to other things. Laughter is like or not as like, depending on the poet and their ability to take a simple moment and stretch it out across the page. Make the rest haiku, the trail of your giggle, <laughs> as it fades out into little more than tiny bits of what was. Make them mourn the memory of your laughter. Miss the heartiness of your sweet abandon. Then find a reason to laugh at the absurdity of so much thought being put into something so silly. Yes, make us all feel silly about being tricked by the unyielding power you have had all along and so rarely used and so rarely used. My advice in times like these. The second poem is even, E-V-E-N, even. If I were the kind of chick who just said things like this, I would tell you that the moment I saw you, I knew I loved you. Would take every moment in your presence, count it as a payment, for some good deed or the other. Proof that God is just, not the jealous queen they make her out to be. If I were ever that kind of chick, I would admit that sometimes I sit in my empty bed and try to remember the scent I have only found left lingering in a room you left when I wanted you to stay. Girls like me keep our hearts behind glass, visible and intangible, needing only to be adored. From, the, from behind red velvet ropes, just beyond camera flashes. We do not like to be touched in places that make us feel fleshy. Don't like people seeing what really happens behind the curtain. Little by little, I push you farther back. You wait patiently 
for the confirmation that I know you are there. In that moment where the crowd thins, I see you. Moments of stillness in all of my madness, bringing into focus almost in an instant what is real and what is fantasy. If I could be the kind of chick who says the words her heart sings, I would tell you that the moment I saw you, I knew I loved you. And the last poem by Red Summer tonight. The poem is True Blue, a dedication. She says her favorite color is blue, true blue, but green misses her, wraps her in luscious arms hoping for a chance to feel the softness in the curve of her back. Oh, and orange, the way orange kisses her face, lighting up her eyes, leaving trails of sweet juice in the corner of her mouth. Red loves her, but kind of sits in the center of her chest, like heartburn after a delicious meal. So she tends to stay away. And she usually overlooks the way yellow lays on the nape of her neck, lingers there longer than anywhere else. She and Purple had a falling out. Their relationship left her bruised and sore so they don't really speak no more. She used to get down with Brown, dug that earthy vibe, but she always did love watching the skies. So now her favorite color is blue, true blue. And it's better that way. Red Summer, ladies and gentlemen. And as we do in the poetry world, the poetry pop. Love you, Red Summer. I don't think, she, no, she's not in Atlanta anymore. I believe she's in Chicago or Detroit. I'm not sure where she is right now. But she is a beautiful soul and a fabulous poet. And I love the way she speaks French. <laughs> and that's Red Summer. So look forward to me sharing with you some of Claudia in coming videos. Why? Because we've opened the door to knowing one to another. And tonight and always, I wish you love, light, wealth, and health. Besitos y abracitos a todo el mundo. Stand in your own spotlight. Because it's a beautiful place to be. Bye. See you in another video.